you can't hear the echo of fallow rotting in the woods at the moment, you will hear Lupton and his rhythm sticks. We don't think we've ever gone out for any rut of any deer in any part of the world and gone, the conditions are just perfect. So, on the 13th of October at 6.45 in the morning in Sussex, it is 15 degrees centigrade and the chance of a mature fallow buck getting a sweat on is pretty remote. A bit warm, isn't it? It's very warm. Very, very warm. For this time of year, unfortunately, it is incredibly warm. I think we're about 15 degrees this morning. David got here bright and breezy and um, he'd been sitting out for 15 minutes before I arrived and he's heard a couple of grunts. Whether or not that's just a little bit of indigestion, we don't know. But you see that coming a mile. I know, it was set up. But no, so we should be in the start of the fallow rut at the moment. Um, and I'm hoping that we might be able to get a bit of action today. So we've dusted off the old antlers and we've come out. Um, we're going to go to a couple of little rutting stands, just have a bit of a rattle, see if we get any reaction. Hopefully we'll hear some grunting. Um, as I say, this, this warm weather's not helping. Uh, it should really be frozen. Yeah, we should have a lovely frost and a nice crisp morning. And then I think it would be a different story, but I know in other places that the rut is kicking off um, and it, it's just uh, just starting off quite nicely. Um, as I say, if there are bucks grunting here, then there is a chance we may be able to get a call on one and um, get a bit of a reaction, but we'll see. And the other thing I need to do is obviously, um, if we get a chance, is shoot a few foxes as well. So it should be a fun morning. Jason Doyle recently described hunting fallow deer to David as like hunting teddy bears. Sure, these may not be as tough as Seeker in the Wicklow Mountains, but they are pretty skittish, thanks to the plague of dog walkers in the area. Just spotted a little group of fallow just under the oak trees there, so they're obviously out just clearing up the acorns there. There's a couple of bucks that we can see, so I'm not overly fussed about um, taking too much. If there's a pricket, obviously we'll take a pricket. And if there's a poor sorrel, we'll take a poor sorrel. But if there's a, if it's decent bucks there, then obviously we'll leave them, but we need to get a little bit closer and have a proper assessment. We are going to have to be crafty. And if we're not, Roy has written permission to smack David. <laughs> you explain yourself. Watch <laughs> out. <laughs> the guys from Viperflex. Asked me if there's anything that I wanted printed on my sticks. You've and by I've, I, on it. I've personalised my sticks by having my official pair of David Taking sticks. So you are in big trouble now, mate. That might actually work to our advantage. All the sheep started running into the colour. I think they can feel it's about to start hammering again, so they've just gone in just to the edge of the woodland just to take shelter and that's pushed our group of deer across but they're just on our boundary now so I'm hoping that they don't go across but it's pushed them out of plain sight so this is hopefully going to give us a chance just to follow the contour and then follow this little scrub line down. We move slowly, slower than normal, with good reason. Out pop a number of deer we thought had headed into cover. There's a pricket there. I don't want to show him these too good. There's too poor a one, so we're just going to wait. <laughs> Roy takes his time and we reach the wood. There's a buck right in front of us, broadside behind cover. It's incredible how well hidden it is. It's times like this where good optics really do pay off because the light levels are very low and we're looking from quite a lit area into underneath the canopy of the wood so it's very very dark in there and still we're able to pick up exactly what's going on and pick up just the slightest of movements you're just looking through and you're just looking for the flicker of an ear or the flick of a tail so it really is worth just taking your time and go a lot slower than you can imagine possible just slow everything down, just watch and just slowly approach because the moment that we go in there and they make us, then it's game over for the day. They'll move off into the thick forestry, the other side of this valley, and they won't come out again until this evening. It's always the way, the wind, that 
really, really consistent for a little while, going straight across. The deer were down here about 50 yards. The wind swirled and you could feel it on the back of our necks going directly to them. And they've just evaporated. Everything has just disappeared. Roy does not need to pull the trigger today. It's an opportunity to see who is about. So we just let him go on his merry way um, and he was absolutely lovely, nice little two-year-old so didn't want to shoot him. He came in and we could have shot him 20 times over and I'm hoping that he may be one that we can watch on the rutting stands over the next few years coming on. I think, looking at him, I think he's probably um, one of the young from my old buck that I took out. He looked very, very similar to him with his configuration and stuff with his second ear head. So I really, really did like him. I want to keep him. Um, and again, when you're dealing with fallow, it's incredibly difficult because they are so transient. And especially in the southeast of England, in the south of England, a lot of the estates are not that big. And a fallow has got such a large range, they could walk 10, 15 miles overnight, especially when it's coming up to the run. But he'll walk through a lot of other properties. Um, and unfortunately, there does seem to be the general attitude at the moment with stalking to shoot whatever you see because if you don't shoot it somebody else will but personally if I get animals like that coming through although I have lost a lot of good bucks because people on neighbouring estates have shot them where I've been leaving them if I shoot them I know they've definitely not got a chance so for me personally I'd much rather leave decent animals and let them come through um, and, and watch the development of them on the writing stands over the years. We've had some good results and the handsome young buck could well be a chip off the old block. With our presence well and truly felt, Roy moves over to some foxing. Nothing. We try again on the other side and again nothing. 
Now, Roy is one of several fox shooters we've spoken to of late who have noticed a significant drop-off in fox numbers this year. However, our Instagram survey suggests that the problem may be localised. I would say generally the, the numbers on our bits are definitely um, low, uh, or definitely down compared to where they normally are. So, yeah, not really quite sure what's going on there. When we do find one, Roy will be ready with his new scope. The latest Leica Fortis has arrived for him to play with. This little scope I put on last night um, and it was peeing down with rain and we were just, I just had to go and zero it in the, uh, in the lamp and the, I was so impressed with the image quality of it. Um, so I was, I was really looking forward to taking it out this morning. We've got the 56 objective lens on it, magnification up to 15 and I think for a, a, a woodland stalking rifle, I mean you can, and the 15, I mean it's, it's perfect for, for most applications but for, for the sort of work we do it's a, a perfect little scope. No luck for Lupton today, but if the weather plays ball in the next few weeks, we will play ball too.